690. Revive us again. We praise thee, O oh God, for the spirit of love. Revive us again. 490. Let's stand together and we'll all sing. Revive us again. Brother Bob will lead us. On that verse together, we praise thee, O oh God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus. Good singing and uh, good to see you here. And uh, let's ask the Lord's blessing on our meeting tonight. Let's pray. Father, we bow before you this evening. Thank you for a Wednesday night church. Another opportunity for us to gather together with the people of God. And thank you for each one who's made the effort in their way here to the service this evening. And Lord, we bow before you and ask that you would do what we just sang, that you'd revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Father, I pray you do that for each and every individual here this evening. Lord, I pray that you'd meet with us now, and you know the needs of our heart. I pray that you'd meet those needs tonight, and uh, bless our fellowship. Bless Brother Yoder as he shares with us what you did uh, in him and through him, and the others there on his recent trip. And I pray, God, that you'll just make it the, the, the service as you would desire it to be. Use it in each one of our hearts and lives, and we'll thank you for it. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, you may be seated. Amen. Turn with me, if you would, to 302 in your hymnal, 302. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. Life has purpose now it never had before. On that first together. Life has purpose now it never had before. There is meaning to each day and even more. For a joy and peace I can't explain is mine. Since I found new life in Christ, my Lord divine. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it is wonderful to be God's child. Oh, it is wonderful to have your sins forgiven. Oh, it is wonderful to be redeemed, justified, forever reconciled. I can go directly to the Lord in prayer. He has told me I may boldly enter there, and he listens as his promises I plead. I find mercy there and grace for every need. Oh, what is wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, what is wonderful to be God's child. Oh, what is wonderful to have your sins forgiven. Oh, what is wonderful to Justified forever reconciled, and the hope of heaven's glories thrill me so. Where I live with Christ forevermore, I know that is why the things of earth I loosely hold. I've eternal riches better far than gold. So oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it is wonderful. singing this evening and a little bit different tonight 
uh, we're going to get to hear from Brother Yoder about his recent trip that he had, and uh, he's got some uh, slides to show us and uh, going to tell us a little bit about work that he did while he was there and uh, what has been happening and what is going to be happening uh, over there in Armenia. And so we're going to hear from him in just a moment, but I want to remind everybody of the VBS meeting right after service tonight, and we're going to meet. We're just going to meet, uh, let's just meet right in that section right over there, okay? And uh, it'll be uh, brief and to the point, and then uh, those of you in the choir can get to choir practice, and uh, everything will go uh, smoothly that way. And then, of course, uh, are you tomorrow night? Pray that all goes well. We've uh, got canceled the last couple Thursday nights down there at the prison. And uh, are we having fun with the lights here, are we? And uh, good? <laughs> if Maybe we could wait till he shows slides to turn them off, and uh, that way, you know what one's to hit now? That way it won't be in the dark while I'm talking, all right? <laughs> uh, you know how it is, folks. You don't pay much, you don't get much, you know? So, uh, <laughs> uh, and so uh, we'll have, uh, then Friday night, are you right here at 7 o'clock in the auditorium? And then our soul winning and bus visitation as usual Saturday at 10 and uh, getting out the flyers for Vacation Bible School, which starts next week, and that'll be an exciting time. I'm looking forward to that, and uh, it'll be a great, great week next week. Now, next Wednesday night, uh, we'll all meet at 6.30, okay? So not at 7. You meet at 6.30. We'll be part of the BBS next uh, Wednesday evening, and Brother Eddie and all that they do, and uh, we'll just kind of uh, take that into one one big service, and uh, they'll, they'll dismiss, and we'll have a few other things we'll do with the adults, and... Uh, we'll stay right on schedule, okay? All right. Um, let's see. I think that's the uh, pray for the Hendricksmans, of course. Uh, tomorrow morning will be Brother Neal's service uh, down at Grace Works Baptist Church in Milford, Ohio at 11 a.m. And so I uh, appreciate you will be traveling down there for the service and uh, pray for that service and for God to be glorified in that. I, uh, I went back and looked and uh, watched again today, uh, he, he preached for us here on a Wednesday night, April 13th, we were at the RU conference. Uh, those who were here, anybody remember what text he used that night? I know you remember the night, don't you? That David raised his hand. Remember what text he used? He said, Luke 1, He said, the, the Lord hath done great things to me, and holy is his name. And he just talked about the great things God had done for him uh, in his life. And uh, that, that's just amazing. He didn't know that 82 days later, God had taken him to heaven. Just 82 days later, then, then that message right there. Uh, Boast not thyself of tomorrow. You know not what a day can bring forth. And uh, what a blessing it was to hear that again today. And uh, it would look forward to a great service uh, down there tomorrow uh, for the home going. It's a sad time on our part because we'll miss having him here, and I'm sure it's that way with the family. But listen, uh, this is uh, this is why you know this is what what it's all about: absent from the body and present with the Lord. Uh, what a what a great time he's having now uh, with the Lord Jesus. Amen. All right. Well, listen, Brother Yoder uh, got back a week ago today. I think he's getting the jet lag worked out and um, working on that, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing. Uh, from him and uh, brother Dave you come you take the next uh, 15 20 minutes whatever you need and uh, you you tell us about it show us about it and uh, anything else the Lord puts in your heart all right Thank you, Pastor. well it sure is good to be home uh, I, I guess I was here last week <laughs> but uh, that was that was just in body and and then I uh, it's it's amazing what we have here at this church, and I'm so happy to be part of it, and I'm just glad that uh, uh, I was able to go over to Armenia. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, just talk for just a few minutes about some of the things that happened, and then we'll look at some pictures, and then uh, we're going to play an Armenian song over there, okay? So I left for Yerevan, Armenia, June 4th for a 25-day mission experience. My flight was approximately uh, 19 hours of air time. I departed from Cleveland to Boston and then Boston to Doha, which is beside Saudi Arabia. While walking to my plane transfer in Doha, I met a young 
foreign exchange student who had been living in Orville, Ohio. He had attended a high school and then went to a so-called Christian college for two years. When I met him, he was going home to Albania, still never had heard the gospel. I thoroughly explained the gospel to him and gave him a gospel tract. He knew his country was atheist, and after hearing the gospel, he knew the difference between religion and Christianity. Although he did not accept Christ at that time, when we parted, he thanked me, and he uh, said he would consider the matter. After this encounter, I left from Doha to Armenia, where Ron Moreland and our translator, Hike, uh, were waiting for me at the airport. We stayed at a local church pastored by a man named uh, Brother Garrick. Uh, his last name's about that big, so. Uh, I believe there uh, are only a six Baptist churches of any type in the whole country, and certainly this one was the only one that went soul winning. Pastor Garrick was elated that our team and when I talk about our team, I'm referring to uh, Brother Ron Moreland, uh, myself, and a man from Canton, Ohio that came with me, uh, Brother uh, Doug um, Fowler. He was so happy that we were there, this pastor, and that our team was there to help him instead of specifically uh, telling him what our program was and uh, what we were going to do. We had prayer meeting with him. We had devotions with him in the morning, and we asked him what he would like us to do. So we did uh, uh, the work of an evangelist by helping that local church. And uh, again, he was just beside himself uh, using things like, I'm Abraham, and you're the three angels that came, and all these other things. Uh, but he, he was just constantly in tears when he talked about what we were uh, accomplishing. He revealed his heart to us and his plan was very vast yet practical. Uh, we were very thankful that the pastor was bilingual. However, I did not realize how difficult the language barrier would be. No words or letters were recognizable by sight or sound. The people did not even understand the words yes and no. Without a translator, communication was impossible. Much of the food was natural and delicious, although often unusual. Uh, I ate a sub sandwich made of onions, chicken gizzards, dill, natural sharp cheese, and hot sauce. Once I enjoyed a meal along a river where all the food, eggs, mushrooms, various greens, cheese, chicken, lamb, and pork were all grown or made in the yard of the restaurant. Explaining the plan of salvation was not like here in America where you can explain the gospel in a few minutes. Most presentations were an hour and 15 minutes to two hours uh, each. The traditions of the people is to believe because Armenia was the first Christian nation in AD 300 that they are all Christians. I found that the story of Nicodemus in John 3 concerning the new birth, in addition to the Romans road, were effective. The pastor and I spent time praying over villages where he believed that God wanted churches started, and there are over 900 villages in Armenia. I spent many hours soul winning. To God's glory, at least 23 people were saved. The soul winning was all done through a translator who was a true blessing from God. Overall, the people were extremely friendly. Uh, most, almost all would invite you into their home for coffee, bread, cheese, and homegrown greens. I was not told to leave any houses, although the people who grow, grew up under the old Russian regime did not believe in God and mocked quite a bit. The country is in deep poverty, and the average good wage is $10 to $12 a day. Russia withdrew from the country in 1991. Most jobs were financed by the Russian government. When they left, the economy crashed and people lost their jobs. Uh, people that had money in the bank 
the monetary system was changed and they lost everything. Many have not worked since then. When you go there, you see buildings, everything's made out of cement and rebar, and there's buildings everywhere, buildings, uh, home, residence, industrial, uh, bridges, roadways, everything, three quarters of the way done that have been sitting there for 25 years. While I was there, I gave my testimony twice, preached four times, taught two night Bible school classes, and led many home Bible studies. Quickly, let me give you three different soul winning experiences, and then we will look at the slides. We were at one uh, village. Well, I call it a village because the area that we were in was strictly apartments, and it was uh, uh, called Vanazor. It was actually the second largest city in uh, Armenia. But um, we, their, their service was on a Thursday night, and so we would do we would go there, uh, we would leave Thursday morning. It would take us over two hours to get there. And then when we got there, we would do soul winning and discipleship. And the church that we were working with there was branched out of the one that I was stationed at in Yerevan. Uh, but the apostolic church, which is the official church of Armenia, had come in and spread bad doctrine and bad uh, advertisement about it and completely ripped it up. So we were rebuilding that church. Uh, the first week we were there, they had about 30 people, and when we left, they had between 55 and 60. But we went to these two uh, uh, children. There were two children that we led to the Lord, and they were very excited, and we went in to talk to their parents. And like many of the families that are there, there was no father. Uh, he, was, he was actually part of the family, but he moved to Russia to get work, and then they send their money back to Armenia. And so I talked with the mom and the, and the grandmother, and we went through the plan of salvation, uh, and they understood everything, but they were still, again, confused with, religion and being born in Armenia and how they were Christians and so forth. So uh, we went through uh, the story of Nicodemus and specifically asked them, have you been born again? Of course, they knew, did not know anything about that. We went through that. We explained um, how Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. And we explained the death, burial, and resurrection and then we asked them if they wanted to be saved, and they said yes. And after that, in their Bible, we wrote uh, a new birth certificate, the name of the mother, the name of the grandma, and uh, we signed it. Of course, I'm Dr. Yoder, so I'm allowed to sign the birth certificate. <laughs> and <laughs> um, we put the time of the birth. And the, I'm telling you, these people were just beside themselves. You cannot imagine how excited that they were. Then there was another story uh, that I had texted a few people about specifically to pray for a man named Alberto. Uh, when I was, I was just uh, in the church one night because we stayed in the local church. They had rooms for us and everything and we stayed there and I went down and I talked to the security guard and I always tried to ask people about their family, uh, what their brothers and sisters were doing, where their mom and dads were, and if they were, were also in church. And the, the security guard, he was a, um, uh, a kickboxer and had done a lot of weightlifting, so we had a lot of different things in common. And um, all of a sudden, this guy kind of starts to tear up on me which, believe me, this guy was, that's the farthest thing from him. And uh, he said, something happened to my brother about six years ago. And he started talking about how he was just a normal person. And uh, one day, he just, his mind was messed up. He would never leave the house. He was afraid of everything. Um, one, for one year, the only time he did leave was after dark. And then he came back, 
And he said, I, I don't know what's going on with my brother. He said, he's, he's really, really weak. He said, I've known my brother. He's re really weak. But the other day, he wanted to leave. And when I tried to stop him, he was so strong, I could not even hold on to him. And he said, I think my brother's demon-possessed. So I said, well, we need to go see him, and, and we'll talk to him. And I said, but give me a few days to pray about that. And so that's when I contacted some of you, and we prayed about that. So <coughs> about a week later, we went over to his house. And, uh, of course, when I say house, I'm talking huge apartment complex. It's just cement and, and dirty and just like walking in a ice cooler. I can't imagine what it would be like to live there at night. But there he was laying on the bed, and, and um, the security guard, his name was Artur, his grandmother was there. Well, we asked Alberto if he would come out. He said no, he would not. And so I started giving the gospel to his grandmother, and we talked to Grandma for about an hour, hour and a half, and Grandma uh, knew that she needed to ask Jesus to save her, but she didn't want to do it publicly. And so then I, I, I said, well, look, go, get, go get Alberto. That's why we're here. And uh, he, his brother looked at me and said, uh, he said that we need to leave because he's dangerous right now. And I said, well, go get him anyhow. So we brought him in the room, and we talked to him. And he, I don't know if you know anything about uh, demon possession, but there's certain signs and symptoms that they have they're, they're, uh, it's, it's obvious and uh, this guy was in serious trouble and so I took him to to first John and I showed him about how it's uh, the blood of Jesus Christ that overcomes and he started saying all these things how I want to do this for the Lord and I, I want to be saved but I can't and 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 I told him to stop that the devil's just lying to you He's giving you a free will. If you want to be saved, you can. And he said, I want the blood of Jesus Christ to save me. I, 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 want, to, I want to be a Christian. And I just stopped the conversation, and I said, well, let's do that right now, and then we'll talk about it some more. And so we both uh, we prayed, and he asked Jesus to come into his heart and save him. He asked the Lord to give him liberty and, and to not listen to the things that were in his head and so forth. And then I gave him some verses, and um, uh, we got him a, 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 a John and Romans in Armenia. And last we heard from him, he was still uh, studying the book of John. So um, when you see the film or the, the pictures, you'll see one picture of him. The first one, he's kind of mad, and his eyes are down like this, and he's looking really strange. That was after he had asked the Lord to save him. And we said, you're a Christian now. You're allowed to smile. And so the next one, he's got a huge smile on his face and everything. And uh, you, you'll like that. The last one, last one I want to tell you about, and every one was a special story, so I just had to kind of choose a couple. Uh, this was Yorgi. Uh, when, we were, when we were soul winning in the, the, um, the village of Vanazor, we saw this mechanic's shop, and we saw two guys working there. But we went to make our contacts and everything, and when we came back to where we were staying, uh, I told Brother Fowler, I said, I want to go back to that shop. And he said, you know, uh, the Lord laid the same thing on my heart, too. So we took our translator, and we went back to the shop, and we started talking to these guys about uh, salvation. Well, the one, he had some uh, vodka in him, so he, he didn't really want to hear about it too much. And so I kind of took him off to the side, and we talked about cars, while the other one um, went through salvation and different things with him. Well, things kind of started to get heated up. We were going to have to make a decision or, or do something. And then a, then a third guy comes in, a big guy. And his name was Yorgi. And so I knew he was going to stir up trouble. So I took my Bible, and I tried to... You know, when you don't know any written words, when you don't know any spoken words, you're extremely limited. So I started pointing to the Bible, and he understood about the Bible. And, and I told him, me, I'm going to heaven. And I pointed to him, told him he was going to hell. And 
and, uh, and he agreed with that. And he, he started to get really worried about what to do. So finally, he went over to where the translator was with Doug, and uh, he, all of a sudden, he just cut into the conversation, and the other guy had to leave and go work in the mechanic shop. And he started saying about all this different kinds of stuff and everything, about how the churches uh, were wrong and they're deceiving them and, and so forth. And I said, hey, what, what if all the churches are wrong? That really messed my translator up. What? <laughs> I said, what if, just tell him, what if they're, you mean all of them? I said, just tell him, what if they're all wrong? And he looked at me, and, and I said, now, does that change your condition between you and the Lord? And his, his countenance just dropped. And my translator, he started talking to him, uh, giving the gospel to him. And the next thing I knew, he looked at me and said, okay, he's ready to pray now. <laughs> <laughs> so he prayed and asked the Lord to come into his heart. And just a few seconds later, he st started to almost get in a panic. He's like, something is wrong. I don't know what's happening with my eyes. Something's happening with my eyes. And I said, that's called forgiveness. And his face just lit up like you wouldn't believe. And uh, a week later when we went to see him again, all these people, when we went to go see him the next week or whatever, uh, they were so happy to see us. And they uh, just treated us really like brothers and sisters. So thank you so much for sending me. Uh, because you sent me, there's much fruit to your account. Thanks, Pastor Slayball and 1040 and all those who had special prayer for us uh, while I was gone. And then a special thanks to Mrs. Slayball for watching over my wife for me. I appreciate that. Um, we're going to look at the slides, and, and I'll just interject a thing or two while they're going on. Um, this should take about six or seven minutes. So, all right, go ahead. Uh, is there a... Thank you. 
Wasn't that good? Man, that was great. feel like you've been there a little bit anyway, and uh, that's great, Brother Yoder. Thank you so much. That was wonderful. All right. Um, Susie Callahan, you got some visitors with you this evening. Why don't you introduce them for us, okay? Mm-hmm. Their friend, John, okay, I remember these two. They've been here before. It's good to see you folks tonight. Thank you for being here. And uh, just one card for John, Brother John. Well, you've been here before, and I'm sure we have their information. And uh, great to have you tonight. Thanks for coming on Wednesday nights at church. That's great. All right. He's going to get their card to fill out here in just a moment. And while we're singing, you can fill that card out, John. All right. Thank you for being here this evening. There you go. Appreciate that very much. All right. Listen, rest of us take a songbook while he fills that out. Let's sing together number 75. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith we can see it afar. Let's go ahead and stand to sing number 75 in the suite by and by. There's a land that is fairer than day, and by faith. And greet one another. Make somebody feel welcome, especially our guests. The instruments will play a few stanzas together. Sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. In the sweet by and by, we shall meet on that beautiful shore. We shall sing on that beautiful shore. The melodious songs of the blast, and our spirits shall sigh. Thank you. 
succeeded. And of course, it's the uh, first Wednesday night uh, of the month, and we get to take an offering for Brother Yoder and for future trips that the Lord will open up the doors for him uh, to be able to take. And uh, that, that little institute they started there that uh, just kicks off with, what, 25 or 30 there, uh, Mount Ararat Bible Institute. What a great name that is, huh? And uh, we're excited about what the Lord's doing there and uh, what, what doors will open in the future uh, for Brother Yoder and for the 1040 International. And we're excited to have a part in it. So uh, let's give towards that tonight, and uh, that'll go right back in to uh, continue to replenish the, the trip fund. Uh, so that when uh, the Lord opens the door for another place to go, he's ready to go, all right? And let's pray and ask God's blessing on giving. Father, thank you for the privilege that's ours to give, and thank you, Lord, for the fruitful trip you gave to Brother Yoder and Brother Fowler and Brother Moreland while they were there. And, Lord, continue to use Brother Ron. I know souls are continuing to be saved and Christians strengthened and continue to use him there and others as they come and go from that place, Lord. And uh, we pray now you'll bless this offering tonight. Lord, I pray that you'll uh, help each of us to give sacrificially. And Lord, giving, knowing that we're investing in the souls of people. We're investing in eternity. And Lord, it'll be a great day in the street by and by when we see these people in heaven because we gave to get the gospel to them. So bless our giving tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Take your Bible to see. Let's study the seat of Christ, right? Even if we get it where it normally happens, that'd be great. Um, Acts chapter 1. If one of you men that act can get in the fellowship hall, can you get me a water, please? It's very dry tonight, and we don't have water this evening. So if you get me something, that'd be a blessing. Acts chapter 1, beginning in verse 1, the former treatise. Have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, until the day in which he was taken up, after that he through the Holy Ghost had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God, and being assembled together with them, commanded that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons, which the Father hath put in his own power. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and under the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven, as he went up, behold, Two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. 
Then returned they unto Jerusalem <coughs> from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went into an upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zelotes, and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and with his brethren. Now, Father, we ask you to add your blessing to the reading of our scripture here this evening. And, uh, Lord, thank you already for the wonderful time we've had together here tonight. What a blessing it was to just see in, in picture and to hear the, the account from Brother Yoder uh, what you're doing uh, literally to us on the other side of the world. And, uh, Father, we, we thank you and praise you for what you did in the hearts and what you're doing in the hearts and lives of people there. And I mean, and I pray you'll continue to use the man and open the doors uh, to the whole Central Asia there uh, where these folks will be able to get the gospel to people who have never heard and some who have never heard the true gospel. And Father, we ask now for your help as we open up your word and we look at this particular passage tonight and this event that took place and help us to understand and help us to grasp the importance of the ascension of Jesus Christ. So guide us and lead us in our study this evening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This will be a little little bit different tonight. This is uh, probably a little more uh, informative. Uh, that just so it's wet, brother. That'll work. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> we we, I, I want to talk to you about the ascension of Christ. Do you ever think about how we grasp the earthly ministry of Jesus? We do it by events that took place. Um, we, we celebrate his birth. And in fact, when he was born, angels announced his birth. And uh, they were suddenly a great multitude of heavenly hosts <coughs> announcing the birth of Jesus. And we celebrate the birth of Christ. We know his death on the cross, his substitutionary death for us on the cross. And again, we know that angels were there as well. Jesus said, don't you know I could call 12 legions of angels right now and uh, they'd come and set me free. They, they would take care of this matter. They were standing by, I think, just waiting for a word from the Lord Jesus. And we understand Calvary and we celebrate Calvary and his death for us on the cross. It was, we, we celebrate the resurrection of Christ. Uh, that's when he, uh, three days after the death, he rose from the dead. And by the way, angels announced that. When the women came to the tomb, who's the one who met him? Angels. Uh, why seek ye the living among the dead? He's not here. He's risen. And uh, they gave the announcement. And so we, we understand his, his death. And so with birth, his death, his resurrection, uh, we, we understand all that. And it's interesting. We celebrate all those things as, as a Christian church. But one thing that we kind of just overlook is, what we just read here in Acts chapter 1. And that's his ascension back to heaven. His ascension back to heaven. And again, when he goes up to heaven, guess who's there? Angels are there. And they, they two men stood by them in white apparel, and they say, uh, what do you stand gazing up into heaven for? Well, if I just saw a guy lift off and go up through the sky, I'd be standing there gazing too, I'm sure. He says, what are you gazing up to heaven for? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. And so it's a, it's a prophecy that Jesus is going to come back the same way. And the Bible says when he comes back, it'll be with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And he'll return uh, for us. Now we're going to focus tonight on the ascension of Jesus Christ. Now the word ascension means arising. Uh, rising, moving upwards, it literally means a proceeding from the less to the greater. That's an ascension, uh, going from the less to the greater. And then that what Jesus did? He went from the less to the greater. Uh, that's what happens when, when we die, we're absent from the body, we're present with the Lord. <coughs> we're going from the less to the greater. That's what happens when a believer dies. So it was the moving upward of Jesus Christ from earth to heaven. Now just as the resurrection completed the death of Christ, the ascension completes the resurrection of Christ. 
You understand he's alive and he resurrected, but he didn't he didn't continue to, to stay on earth. He he went back to heaven and we'll talk about why in just a few minutes. Because the Bible says he ascended back to heaven to sit at the right hand of God. The right hand is the place of power, the place of authority. It's the it's it's the place of control. And by the way, he is in control of everything. You say, oh, look what's going on in the world. We can look and we can be surprised and we can say, oh, Britain got out of the EU and, oh, this is going to happen and this country is going to collapse and, oh, what's going to happen now? And you know what? God, God never says, oh, my. God never says, well, looky there. You know, uh, it, everything's under control. And he has all power. And he's in the seat of power sitting at the right hand of God. Uh, that's why he, he told the Pharisees, and they preached also in Acts chapter 2, uh, about Jesus being at the right hand of God. So he didn't just disappear. Jesus didn't just disappear one day. He left on a trip with a purpose and a destination. He was ascending back to the right hand of the Father. So what are we supposed to do with that? Spend our time gazing up into heaven? No, why stand ye gazing up in heaven? Spend our time looking up there wondering, okay, when are you coming back? A lot of people are spending time trying to figure that out and trying to find a date or a time to, to get that down. No, 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 that's not our response. His leaving, in fact, I want you to turn over to, to Luke 24. Would you turn there, please? Luke chapter 24. This is the only other passage in the New Testament that speaks of his ascension. And it's interesting, Luke records both of them. Luke wrote Acts, and Luke wrote the book of Luke. And in verse number <clears throat> 49 of Luke chapter 24, notice what Luke says. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Amen. And so they, they, they're to tarry. Jesus said, here's your job. You tarry in Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. And that's why they went back in Acts 1 and they assembled in the upper room and they began to pray. Uh, waiting for that endowment of power from on high. Why? Jesus said, there's a job I have for you to do. There's, there's a work you'll do, and you won't be able to do it in your own power. You will not be able to accomplish it in your own strength. You're going to have to be endued with power from on high, and that's going to come if you'll tarry for it. And, and we see that in the day of Pentecost when it came. Now, let's look at this. What does the ascension, what, what the ascension ended? What the ascension of Christ ended? All right, number one, it ended Christ's self-limitations. It ended Christ's self-limitations. On earth, for instance, he could only be at one place at one time. That's over now. Okay, he's not limiting himself anymore because he was in a body. Okay. He limited himself. Now he has no limitations. There's only, there's only one time that he allowed his glory to show when he was on earth. That was on the Mount of Transfiguration. And he let, let guys get a glimpse of what it would be like in his glory. But now he goes back to heaven. He has all the glory and all the authority that he had before he came to earth. See, don't make the mistake of thinking Jesus just, just became Jesus when he came to earth. No, Jesus is eternal. He was there in the beginning with God. And, and so that's just his, when he became flesh and dwelt among us. Uh, but he, before that, he, remember in John 17, he said, glorify me with the glory I had with you before the foundation of the world, before the, before the creation of the world. And now he's back there at the throne of God where, where, where before the throne, those creatures are always saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. And they're saying that day and night and been doing it for thousands of years. It's an amazing thing. So he, he lays aside, not, now he's not limited by himself anymore. Number two, what else ended? His public ministry ended. Why? He's no longer here. Okay? Now, does his work continue? Yes, his work continues. How does it continue? 
through you and me. Why is that so? Look at Acts chapter 1. Look at Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treatise, Have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus, what's the next word after Jesus? Began both to do and to teach. Jesus just, Jesus just began it. Uh, who's, who's supposed to finish it? Huh. We are. Who's supposed to continue the work? We are. It's not our work. It's Jesus' work. We're continuing. We're continuing the work that he began. So he continues in the lives of his followers. Number three, the third thing that ended when Jesus ascended was his redemptive work was finished. He said, it is finished. Nothing more will be done to atone for sin. That's why, that's why when he got to heaven, the Bible says he sat down at the right hand of the Father. Why did he sit down? He's finished. He's done. Now, he's going to have a ministry there, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But, but his, the, the, the redemptive work is done. Everything that needed to be accomplished for you and I to be saved has been accomplished. Everything that could be done for an atonement for our sin has been done. And now he sits at the right hand of the Father. Let me give you the fourth thing that is done. And for this, I want you to turn over to Hebrews chapter 8. The fourth thing that ended was the old covenant is replaced by the new covenant. The old covenant is replaced by the new covenant. Hebrews chapter 8. And this was what I think Paul, who penned Hebrews, was the Lord was using him to get across to these Hebrew believers to help them understand the new covenant. He's talking about the first covenant here, and that would have been the law. Look at verse 7 of Hebrews 8. For if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will make, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel, with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. And they shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know ye the Lord, for all shall know me from the least to the greatest. And I will be merciful to their unrighteousness, and their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more. In that he saith a new covenant, he, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. Now he explains that further in chapter 9 when you drop down to verse number 11. Notice what he says here. He says, Christ being come a high priest of good things to come by a greater and more perfect tabernacle. Tabernacle is the same word in John 1.14 when the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. The word dwelt there is the same word as tabernacle. He tabernacled among us, okay? And so he's talking about his body, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Now listen, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood. He entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of a heifer sprinkling the unclean, sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is no strength at all while the testator liveth. Whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood. For when Moses had spoken every precept to all the people according to the law, he took the blood of calves and of goats with water and scarlet wool and hyssop and sprinkled both the book and all the people, saying, This is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. 
Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle and all the vessels of the ministry. And almost all things are by law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission of, of sin, with no remission. And, and he's talking about sins. It was therefore necessary that the pattern of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these. Well, what's a better sacrifice? For Christ is not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us. Nor yet as he should offer himself often, as the high priest enters into the holy place every year with the blood of others. For then must he have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now once in the end of the world hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. And he goes on all the way into the chapter. It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. That old covenant of the, of the sprinkling of blood and the offering of animals and the sacrifices they gave. God says, that's been replaced now. What with what? With the blood of Jesus Christ. With the new covenant that we have with Jesus that he entered once into the holy place and he offered himself one time a sacrifice for God. Not a continual sacrifice. Nothing you have to continually come and say, this is the body and this is the blood of Jesus crucified afresh for you. That's not biblical. And so you, you, you realize he, he one time offered himself for sin. So now we have the new covenant and our forgiveness of sins by the blood of Christ. All right. So that's what was done away with with the ascension. Now, what is it that began with the ascension? What did the ascension start or what did it begin? Number one, it began his glorification. His glorification. We said earlier he returns to his pre-incarnate, that is, his pre-becoming flesh on earth. He returns to that glory he had with the Father before the foundation of the world. He returns to his proper place in heaven where he's worshipped by all and by everything. And all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth. Secondly, he gets his ministry of intercession. His ministry of intercession begins. You're in the book of Hebrews. Look at Hebrews 4, would you please? Hebrews chapter 4. Seeing then, verse, verse 14, I'm sorry, Hebrews 4, verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our profession. For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities, but he was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now, you put that with Hebrews 7 and verse 25. The Bible says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. What's his ministry there? To make intercession for you and me. To intercede on our behalf. To, to well, What's an intercessor? He, he goes to God on our behalf. He's pleading our case, pleading our cause to God. In, in, in some way, Jesus helps us and helps God to answer our prayers. You say, can you explain all that? No. But that's what the Bible says. I don't quite understand all that. I can understand it. I, I use the illustration, you know, when when the, the when our daughter was real little, uh, the big doll at the time growing up was Cabbage Patch dolls. And you remember those Cabbage Patch things? And, and oh, Amy wanted a Cabbage Patch doll. And, of course, being the kind, compassionate father I was, she doesn't, she doesn't need a doll like that. What are you talking about? They cost how much? Are you kidding me? You know, get her this stick figure one. Yeah, that's good enough, you know. Ah, oh, but, but she had an intercessor. Yeah. yeah. She had a mom who had been a little girl. And, you know, try hard as I could, I never was a little girl. And uh, I've got to be careful. Maybe I hardly say that in these days. But um, <coughs> just never was. 
And I didn't understand, but she goes, oh, I'm just sitting there. When I was a little girl and I wanted this, and boy, I didn't get it. And I, you know, she'd tell me about something she wanted when she was a little girl and she didn't get it, you know. And, it, and I said, you remember that? Oh, yeah, I still remember that. And she interceded, and, and guess what Amy got? She got a Tabitha Pat's doll. She interceded. I understand that because I've never been a girl. But, and, and in some way, you know, in some way, the Lord, having been tempted at all points like we are, having walked where we walk, intercedes on our behalf to God. And yet, and yet, I try to figure that out because, wait a minute, God's all-knowing. And, but, you know, was God, what, wasn't Christ God in the flesh? And, you know, how I put all that together scrambles my brain, to be honest with you. But, but it is a ministry that the Lord Jesus has. And so he wants to intercede on our behalf. He's our great high priest. And he never liveth to make intercession for us. The sad thing is, is how little we pray, how little we give him anything to do. Because we don't pray. You can't intercede for someone who never brings any petitions to God. Right? So it's his, it's his ministry. That began his ministry of intercession did not happen until he ascended back to heaven. Number three, the third thing the ascension began. It began the power and the filling of the Holy Spirit of God. Remember in Acts 24 and verse 49, he said, what are you supposed to do? Tarry ye in Jerusalem until ye be endued with power from on high. I don't believe, and I don't believe Acts chapter 1 is when they were indwelt by the Spirit. I don't believe that. I believe that's when they were filled with the Spirit. <clears throat> There's a difference between being indwelt with the Spirit and being filled with the Spirit. And, and this is a filling of the Spirit, the fullness of the Spirit. You receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And, and, it's a, and, and they were filled and they spoke the Word of God. In Acts 2, they were able to speak in languages that they hadn't learned. There were, I think, 18 or 19 different countries represented there at the Feast of Pentecost, and they heard everybody, everybody heard them preach the gospel in their own language. Okay, And what an impact they had had. You know, that's a, it's, it's a big difference when you go to foreign countries and you, you, you try to just speak English and you just try to show them an English book and an English uh, religion. You know what? That's a Western religion. That's, a, that's your American religion. That's, but boy, when you put it in their language and you speak it in their language, that's power. And it's powerful, those folks. And they, listen, they, they were able to do that in Acts chapter 2. Later on in Acts chapter 4, they were all filled again with the Holy Spirit. Acts 4 and verse 31. And you know what happened then? The Bible simply says they all spake the word of God with boldness. No mention of other languages then. It's funny how those who want the filling of the Holy, the filling of the Holy Spirit or the endowment of power from on high, they all want the tongues. They all want to speak in some other language. How about just speaking the word of God with boldness? How about just having the boldness to speak God's word like you should and to take a stand like you ought to take and tell folks about Jesus? It's, the, it's, the, it's power for witnessing. It's power for victory over sin. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's just an endowment of power from on high. And you got that because Jesus went away. Jesus told his disciples that if I don't go away, then the Spirit can't come. So he says, it's needful that I go away. Because you're going to get the power of the Holy Spirit. You're going to get the fullness of the Holy Spirit to come. Number four, the fourth thing that happened when the, he ascended to heaven is the distribution of spiritual gifts to the church. That began. You read three different places, and we won't turn there for time tonight, but Ephesians 4, 1 Corinthians 12, and Romans 12 are the three places that list spiritual gifts. When you receive Christ as your Savior, God gives you at least one spiritual gift, okay? At least one. Don't look at that list of gifts and say, man, I don't see anything in here I got, okay? Uh, someone else would probably help you to see and to know uh, what spiritual gifts you have. But everybody has at least one. God, he, God doesn't call us into service for him and not equip us to do the job. And so he equips every believer, and he did that uh, when he ascended to heaven. Number five, the fifth thing he began when he ascended to heaven was a ministry of preparation. A ministry of preparation. You say, preacher, what in the world does that mean? Uh, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? 
believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, there you may be also. What's Jesus doing right now? He's still preparing a place for us. Hey, it's been, it's been nearly 2,000 years. He, he, created the, he, cre- he spoke this whole world into existence in six days. You imagine what he must be getting ready for us? He's preparing a place for us. That where, where we are, he may be also. That where he is, we may be also. What a, what a place that's going to be. He's preparing. It's, hey, the only reason we're not home yet is it's not ready yet. Okay? Uh, you know the story of the, uh, when the fellow would, would be engaged to a, a girl and, and they would uh, decide that they want to be married. No wedding date would be set. Invitations would be sent out. The people would be invited to the wedding, but no date would be on it because you didn't know the day. Why? The fellow would go back home to his father's house and they would begin to build onto their home. You always went and lived with the fellow's parents. Isn't that a blessing? Huh? Some of you ladies went, oh my, yeah, well. Could be worse, fellas. You go live with the mother-in-law, amen? But, um, you know, and, and so they would build that extra room on. Listen, the, the son would work on that every day. That was he, he was trying to get ready for his bride. And he would come to the father. But listen, he didn't go get the bride when he thought he was done. He got the bride when his father said he was done. He would always come to his father and say, is it ready? And his father would say, no, this, this, this. He'd work on that. Is it ready? No, this, this. And not until he came to his father and said, is it ready? He said, go get your bride. And then the word would go out, and hey, the, the, the wedding's happening. The bride, he's going to get the bride, and it would all be set, and there'd be an entourage that would come. It was a big deal. I tell you what, it'll be a big deal when Jesus comes for his bride. It's going to be a big deal when Jesus returns for you and me. And uh, what a day that will be. And uh, the ministry of preparation. And then number six, what began was the carrying out of the gospel to his church or by his church. Jesus began in the power of the Spirit, and we're to continue taking the gospel in the power of the Spirit of God. Jesus said, look at John 14. Would you look there, please, and we'll be done. John 14. John 14, verse 12. When you're there, you say amen. Amen. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. That's, that's an amazing verse. I understand him saying, the works that I do, you're going to do also. I'd be right on with that and say, you got it, Lord. We're going to do just what you've been doing. But then the Lord went on to say, no, you're going to do greater works than these, because I go to my Father. And you'll be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. And the Holy Spirit of God is not just filling me and I'm in one place at one, one time and ministering in different places or going about. He's going to infill all the believers and you all can be endued with power. And listen, while you're reaching people in America, there's people getting reached in Armenia and people getting reached in Russia and people getting reached in China and people getting reached all over the world. Greater works than these shall you do because I ascended. I ascended back to heaven. I don't know, we don't, you know, we have a um, Easter and a resurrection time. We celebrate the resurrection of Jesus, and uh, the, we, we, have, we have Good Wednesday because I think Christ was crucified on Wednesday, not Friday, but uh, we, we have a Good Wednesday to celebrate his death. We have Christmas, we try to celebrate his birth. But we don't have anything for his ascension. Maybe we ought to start a new, new holiday and call it Ascension Day or something, but uh, uh, I thank God for the ascension of Jesus Christ. Now, that's, that's just uh, to increase your Bible knowledge a little bit. It's to get, help you understand a little bit how things fit. Uh, it's, it's just, I guess, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. You just learned a little doctrine tonight, okay? I hope you're able to handle it and take it. Amen? Let's stand together for a word of prayer, shall we? Father, we thank you for the ascension of the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Thank you that you ever lived to make intercession for us. Thank you, Father, in your plan that your son would return to heaven and sit at your right hand. 
And Lord, that you would allow the Holy Spirit to indwell us. And you desire that he fill us. That we would yield to him and he would absolutely control every part of our being. Lord, I pray that we would not just know the indwelling of the Spirit, that we would know the filling of the Spirit, the power of the Spirit in our life. I pray that we would be Spirit-filled believers as we carry forth the message of salvation. We cannot do the job without it. And I pray that each of us would yield ourselves to be under the control of your Spirit in our life. Thank you that Jesus has sent that all these things could begin. And Lord, we are looking forward to what you've prepared for us when we get to glory. Now, Father, dismiss us with your care. And Lord, I pray that we'll be about your business this week. For in Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Amen. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Then those of you who are uh, in Vacation Bible School going to be helping out, just uh, zero in right over here in this section. Uh, we'll get that done and uh, just fire up your choir practice, okay? Let's sing together. I'm pressing on the upward way. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day. Still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. God bless you. You're dismissed.